Hello, hi, welcome to our science lesson. Today, in our lesson, we are going to see about using the laboratory. So, let's start with what is mean by laboratory. So, laboratory is the place where we do experiments, where we do practical lessons, and where we can see chemical reactions. Next, we move on to the laboratory rules. So, rule 1. Do not enter the lab without permission. Rule 2. Do not eat, drink or taste anything inside the lab. Rule 3. Do not touch any chemicals or apparatus without permission. Rule 4. Do not make noise inside the lab. Rule 5. Make sure you are not standing in a crowd inside the lab. Rule 6. Do not perform any experiments without supervision. Rule 7. You have to dress appropriately. Next, we move on to the different symbols that represented in different bottles and places so beware of it let's see the first symbol this symbol represents biohazard and this symbol represents radioactive and this symbol represents poisonous and this symbol represent explosive and this symbol represent flammable this symbol represent electrical hazard and this symbol represent oxidizing material and this symbol represent harmful next we move on to the lab equipment and their diagrams. See the first picture, it is a test tube rack. And the second picture, most of you know, it is a test tube to do the lab activity. So this is a conical flask which helps to measure the volume of the liquid. And this is a beaker, it also helps to measure the volume of the liquid. And this picture represents Bunsen burner which helps to heat up things in the lab. And this is a stopwatch which helps to measure the time. And this is a dropper to drop the chemicals inside the test tube. So this is a measuring cylinder which helps to measure the volume of the liquid. And this is a microscope and this is a balance which helps to measure the mass of an object so next we continue with our lab equipment and their diagrams so this picture represent magnifying glass which helps to magnify things which is so small which you cannot see by eyes so this is the thong which helps to hold the test tube. This is a pipette and this is a thermometer obviously to measure the temperature. So this is a round bottom flask. You can see the bottom is round that's why they call this round bottom flask. And this is a flat bottom flask because the bottom is flat. So this too helps to measure the volume of the liquid as well. 
and this is a tripod which has to hold the evaporating dish while heating stuff so next is a wiring gauze which helps to hold the evaporating dish above the tripod so next is a funnel and next is a motor and pestle so next we move on to see measurements measurements can be measured like example we measure length mass volume etc so we start with length length is generally a distance between two points of an object so length is measured by centimeters or meters or millimeters and also length is measured by using ruler or measuring tape etc so you can see the things which helps to measure the length yeah so 1 centimeter is equal to 10 millimeter 1 meter is equal to 100 centimeter 1 kilometer is equal to 1000 meter next we move on to see how to measure the volume of liquid so measuring cylinder helps to measure the volume of liquid so we know we measure the volume of liquid by liters or in liters or milliliters so 1 liter is equal to 1000 milliliter see the pictures down yeah these are the equipment helps to measure the volume of liquid next we move on to see how to measure the mass mass is measured using the balance or measuring a scale so unit of mass is always kilogram so 1 gram is equal to 1000 milligram 1 kilogram is equal to 1000 gram 1 ton is equal to 1000 kilogram so you can see the equipments below which helps to measure the mass next we see how to measure the time so the time can be measured in different units or different amount of units but always the unit of time is seconds it can be measured by using stopwatch stop clock etc so 1 second is equal to 100 milliseconds 1 minute is equal to 60 seconds 1 hour is equal to 60 minutes 1 day is equal to 24 hours you can see the digital clock and the stopwatch which helps to measure the time so next we move on to how to measure the temperature temperature can be measured using degree Celsius or Fahrenheit temperature is measured by obviously by thermometer by either mercury thermometer or alcohol thermometer so the boiling water temperature is 100 degrees Celsius so this picture represents thermometer so next we move on to the Bunsen burner so it is used as a source of heat in the laboratory it uses the gas as a source of fuel and it is connected to the cylinder with a rubber tube so now what are the uses of Bunsen burner Bunsen burner is used in the laboratory for heating or boiling chemicals as a source of heat so you can see the picture already we have seen this picture is a Bunsen burner so how to light a Bunsen burner step one always make sure that the lines are okay so you have to inspect the line step two is connect the hose to the gas step three is air ports to be slightly open step four needle valve to be closed step five open the gas main 
step 6 open needle wall and get your striker ready step 7 start igniting it and the last step you have to adjust the air hole in the Bunsen burner to get a blue flame so hope you had understood the topic thank you see you in our next class